Hello everyone and welcome. <laughs> this is Asia and here's Taiwan. Now let's take a look, shall we? Consisting of one big tropical island and scores of small ones, Taiwan was first inhabited back in stony times by Austronesians who were exceptionally skilled mariners, the first great sailors of history who, for some reason, decided to spread out and settle on lands spanning two oceans. This was the Austronesian expansion by which that group of people set out from Taiwan and took possession of islands from Madagascar to Hawaii. Various cultures arose among the native Taiwanese, mystery monoliths were assembled, then do you know what happened? Not much. That's right, not much happened for a long time. Taiwan went along doing its thing for centuries and no one really bothered it. It isn't until 1349 that we get a written account of Taiwan. This was provided by an explorer from China called Wang Daiyuan. He described the good land, the big trees and the mountains, how the people cannibalized their enemies and produced gold, beeswax, millet and beans for trade. In 1624 the Dutch arrived to establish a colony and two years later the Spanish did the same. The Dutch elbowed the Spanish out and encouraged the immigration of Chinese farmers to Taiwan to work the land. The European colonial presence did not last long however for in the 1660s the Chinese used their numerical supremacy to boot them out and establish their own state there. This state was loyal to the Ming dynasty of China, a dynasty that had already fallen to the non-Chinese Qing dynasty. Ming loyalists hoped to use Taiwan as a base whereby to gather strength and attack and hopefully overthrow the Qing, but it was not to be. Qing troops invaded and defeated the Ming forces, and the Qing emperor was so happy that he wrote two poems celebrating the victory. But the emperor otherwise did not think much of Taiwan, and himself referred to it as a ball of mud. Ball of mud? Dude! Hollywood is that way. Although the government discouraged immigration to Taiwan, the ingress of Han settlers surged and the Chinese quickly became the ethnic majority and the territory run by the natives continued to shrink. After a Japanese invasion, China began to actively pursue a policy of colonization to bring the land under total Qing dynasty control. But before this could be achieved, China lost against Japan in a war and thereafter the Japanese assumed control of Taiwan. There was resistance, but Japan crushed it. The indigenous Taiwanese were removed from their homes and placed in government-appointed farming districts. The Taiyal and Bunan tribes fought the most fiercely against the colonists. But it was the Sedik who, in 1930, led the last major rebellion. The Japanese stomped down the rebels with exceeding brutality, with aircraft employed to drop mustard gas on guerrilla fighters, the first instance of chemical warfare in Asia. Japan invested quite heavily into modernizing Taiwan, but in 1937, as Japan again went to war with China, Japan pushed the promotion of Japanese culture in Taiwan and suppressed Chinese customs and discouraged the use of the Chinese language. During World War II, Taiwan came under heavy bombardment by the Americans. After the Japanese surrender in 1945, most Japanese were expelled. Now over in China, a lot had been happening. The Qing dynasty was overthrown in 1912 and a republic had been declared. Warlords had carved up the country and then there was all that craziness with Japan and a civil war arose against the republic by the communists. These communists, under the leadership of Mao, defeated the Republic of China, which evacuated its government to Taiwan and took charge there under Generalissimo Both the new communist government in China and the republic government in Taiwan argued they were the true legitimate government of China and both claimed the other as belonging to it. In Taiwan, draconian measures were implemented to suffocate any pro-communist sentiment. Many thousands of people were imprisoned, tortured or executed. The wobbly economy began to steady and thrive after the United States provided foreign aid. Here's the US president visiting Taiwan in 1960 and it looks like he's having a great time. Now while it was still under a dictatorial regime, Taiwan invested heavily in agriculture and industrialization and underwent an economic boom known as the Taiwan miracle. The late 20th century saw the gradual decline of dictatorship and the introduction of democracy. Relations with communist China improved, but when a certain trade treaty was proposed with China, the sunflower student protests arose to protest it, arguing that it was not in Taiwan's economic or political interests. They succeeded in halting its passing. Since the days of Mao, the status of Taiwan in relation to China has been characterized by tenseness. In 2022, China was enraged after the US ignored its wishes for it to stay out of Taiwan's affairs. Speaker of the House of Representatives Nancy Pelosi shrugged off the threat and visited Taiwan and promised that it had the United States' full support. China reacted by engaging in intimidating military exercises around Taiwan, something 
they repeated the following year after Speaker Kevin McCarthy visited. Questions, concerns, and political apprehensions aside, Taiwan today enjoys a very high level of human development and is one of the richest countries in the world and is ranked as the most free nation in Asia. And it also invented bubble tea. But what awaits Taiwan in the years ahead? What do you think? Comment below. But for now, bye bye <laughs> Thank you.